God, what an unction. What a liberty, what a deliverance. Father, we love you. We honor you. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. And we shall be looking. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto this day unto your fathers as it is this day. Secrets of supernatural supply or wealth but to be it has been established throughout almost a week now that God is a divine provider he's a supernatural supplier My God shall supply. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. All your need according to his riches in glory. God is a supernatural supplier. And we establish three things at the beginning of the service this morning. And that is number one. That the whole earth and its fullness belong to God. The whole earth and its fullness belong to God. We saw Psalm 21 verse 4, 24 verse 1 in the first service. But we shall add to it Psalm 50 verse 12. Will I eat? Go ahead. Will I? If I were hungry. I will not tell thee. For the whole world is mine and the fullness thereof. Everything you see in the world belong to God. Number two, God empowers his people with his resources. It is in the power of God to give his people what belongs to him. In First Chronicles, now we saw Deuteronomy already. If David speaking in First Chronicles chapter twenty nine, verse eleven to verse fourteen, toward the tail end of his life, look at what he said. He said, "Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty for all that is in heaven." And in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord. And thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you. That is the true riches and true dignity. Only God can give it. He said, thou reignest over all. And in your hand is power and might. In your hand, it is to make great. You have the capacity to make somebody great. And to give strength unto all. Now therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. But who am I? And what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this song? Now look at the last part. For all things come from you, out of you, everything. All things come come of thee and of thy own have we given thee anything we claim to, to be giving you is not our own that was the testimony of David God is the one who empowers his people with his wealth number three God empowers his people 
with his resources as they meet his conditions and live by his principles. As they meet his conditions and live by his principles. We read Job 36, 11, but now we shall look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 and 2. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If, if, if everywhere God will release his supply he will first of all release his demands so you know the law of demand and supply God will release his demand before releasing his supply you want me to be your supplier? I have some demands. I said that his consignment is connected to his commandment. He releases principles to attract provisions. He gives you his principles so you can attract his provisions. We started looking at these principles, secrets, since Wednesday. The first thing we saw that we need to do to attract supernatural supply, number one, was love for God. A heart for God. Where a man's heart is somewhere else and is looking for a God to use, is not possible. Number two we saw was trust in God. Blessed is the man who puts his trust in God. And cursed is the man who trusted in man, according to Jeremiah. He won't see when good comes. Number three, he was faith in God. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. To believe is to see. Then walking in knowledge. These people are poor because they know not. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 4. They are poor. There's something they need to know. They don't know so they are poor. The detail of the things that we taught on Wednesday. I can't go over them now. But it is important that you pick it. Pick the message up. Kingdom. Results come in systems. It's like for a man to function, the respiratory system must be in place. You said my brain is working, my heart is working, but if the lung is not working, it's the dead man. That's that's how it is. The things that God is speaking to us, we need to follow them up through. Many people are good titers, but all the other things that we are talking about, they don't know anything about it. So they are wondering, I am titan, but no result. That is beyond titan. So please pick the message up. And don't fail to be in any, every single service in this month. To follow the secrets of supernatural supply. Now we'll go to point number five. It is the act of giving. Genesis chapter 12, 
verse 2. I'm now speaking other scriptures in addition to what we saw in the first service. He said, I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. And make thy name great. And thou shall be a blessing. God only blesses those who are blessings. The blessing travels in the direction of blessers. I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. If you are not going to be a blessing, don't expect my blessing. If you are not going to be a giver, don't expect my giving. God does not bless containers. He blesses channels. He's not looking for an ordinary reservoir to bless. Is blessing pipes and channels. I will bless you and you will be a blessing. Acts chapter 20 verse 35 corroborates this. I have showed you all things out that so laboring Laboring, you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The giver is at a higher level than the receiver. The person who is only looking for what to receive is at a lower level than the person who is donated to release. Please understand that life is governed by the law of giving and receiving the law of sowing and reaping. All of life is governed. We talked about giving out carbon dioxide and taking in oxygen in the first service and then the plants take the oxygen and give and produce carbohydrates and produce fruit food for, for, for themselves and for, for man. We eat the food that the plant produced. We take that food in. And then we give out something. That something is manure that the plant would use again to become fertilized and produce more food and the cycle continues now if you meet the president of america or the president of any of the countries and the food you ate was so sweet is there any food important enough for you not to go to toilet you say that this food is too much i mean I, you mean i should go and just drop it like that and you want to keep it in your tummy as souvenir. That's death. Nobody can continue to live if they take in without giving out. Nobody. That is how life is programmed to be. Husband gives his wife a cell, one cell, one cell, one cell, one cell. The wife produces for him, brings out a child. How many cells? Uncountable. One cell. And the cell turns into tissues and the tissues into organs and organs into systems. And then the systems make the whole body with a minimum of 204 bones. Apart from muscles, tendons, ligaments, arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, veins, and venules, and arterioles. A 
and every and from the neurons and dendrites and everything from the head to the toe from one cell that is how life is structured the life that receives and does not give will soon stop receiving anything at all what is the focus of our giving it is two directions number one towards god and number two is towards man towards god we give what is called the tithe those scriptures are, are present there the tithe of the land is mine and so on but let, let me add a scripture or two genesis chapter 14 and in verse 18 to 20 scriptures showed us how abraham what became the first titan and Melchizedek king of Salem brought forth bread and wine and he was the priest of the most high God and he blessed him and said blessed be Abraham of the most high God possessor of heaven and earth and blessed be the most high God which has delivered your enemies into your hand and he gave him the tithe of all this was almost 450 years before the law of Moses was given so titan is not a matter of the law We'll come, up, we'll come to this later. Number two is the free will offering. The offering that we give. When we are in church, we have Psalm 96 and in verse 8. He said, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. That he is arrive in his presence with an offering we are not doing it just because it's a religious obligation it is scriptural number three is the sacrifice we read psalm 126 verse 1 to 5 when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we are like them that dream but you can add to it psalm 20 verse 1 to 5 psalm 20 verse 1 he said the lord hear you in the day of trouble the name of the god of jacob defend thee send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of zion why because he remembers all your offerings and he accepts your bond sacrifice whether it was given to us church project or given to us a kingdom that inconveniences you is called sacrifice now towards man there are many others etc we are coming to us we are going to come to us come to givings later number two towards giving towards man includes first of all towards the poor the underprivileged psalm 41 verse 1 to 2 it says blessed is he that considereth the poor the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him. The Lord will keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. If he considers the poor, he shall be blessed on the earth. The other one is the hired servant. The person that you employed giving him his due is part of what establishes your resources james chapter 5 verse 4 look at what god said very serious scripture he said behold the hire or the pay of laborers who have ripped down your fields which you have kept back by fraud this is king james version people who worked for you whose salary whose pay you kept back by fraud he said that money is crying and the cries of them who have labored for you have entered the ears of the lord of sabbath <laughs> you know everything is in the bible people who work for you whose money you kept back fraudulently because you are more powerful than them they can't take you to court they can't take you to police you are richer than them god said their money that is in your hand is crying 
and he has heard the cry and he will deal with you. Very important. Very important. Somebody say, I'm paying tight, but you are owing everybody their money. You are owing them plenty. When governments don't pay people salary, several state government, local government, whatever, seven months, six months, ten months, they are under massive causes. Hallelujah. Anybody you can't pay, you, don't, you, you are not qualified for their services. Do, do it yourself. You can't pay your driver, drive yourself. You can't pay cook, you don't need a cook. <laughs> you don't need it. You can't pay builder, build the house yourself. Hallelujah. We'll leave it for another day. Please take your seat. Another angle is your family, your wife, your children. I'll, re I'll repeat that passage. Very important. First Timothy chapter 5 and in verse 8. He said, but if any provide not for his own and especially for those of his own house, that person has denied his the faith. He is worse than an atheist. He's worse than a godless man. Wife is crying. Children are crying. Brothers and sisters, you, are, you have money. But you are, you are helping outsiders, not your family people. It's a challenge. And then the priest and the prophet. Like I said, the giving, etc. There are many others. will deal with these givings another time. But the act of giving is a a, 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 a trigger for supernatural supplies. Number six is the act of service. The act of service. Job chapter 36 verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Where you spend your years is determined by how much you serve him. How you spend your life is determined by how much you serve him. If they obey. John chapter 4 verse 35. There are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to the harvest. And he that reapeth, anybody who enters this harvest field in the kingdom. And makes himself or herself a worker. He that repaired, receiveth wages. Can stop there. He that repaired, receiveth wages. To work for God is to be qualified for his wages. Those who work for God are qualified for wages. Please take note of two things. One, there is no labor without profit. No service without reward. For in every labor, there is profit. Whether it 
that is labor in the world or labor for God. You know, manual laborers receive their pay at the end of the day. No labor without reward. Please put the scriptures, Proverbs 14, 23. No labor without profit. Number two. God will never use man's service without wages. He will never use man's service without wages. Why do I say so? Because he himself said in Jeremiah chapter 22 verse 13 Woe unto him that builds his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong that uses his neighbor's service without wages. If God is cursing the person who is making people to work for him without paying them, then he will never be guilty of what he's angry with. God will never. God has, God now, I, I, I tra trained as a medical doctor and God called me to become a pastor and I went full blast into pastoral ministry. And after 20, many, many years, I can tell you that God has not wasted my life. He didn't waste me. He will never use anybody's service without wages. Beloved, are you looking for the blessing of the Lord? Don't just sit down in church. You shall serve the Lord and he shall bless. There are people who are in no there is no area of service, no soul winning service, no in-house service, and they are asking for blessing every day. Bless you for what? So I want you to pray for me, Pastor Paul, for the blessing of God. Why? Why? You shall serve the Lord and he shall bless. If you are interested in the blessing, service is the pathway. Service. Refuse to feel comfortable as a ch no, nominal church goer. Refuse to feel comfortable. Identify what way, which area you can be engaged in impacting your, your world for God. That was number six and because of time, time is already up. Number seven, which is very, very critical, is walking in integrity. Uncompromising financial integrity is a non-negotiable requirement for supernatural supply. Uncompromising financial integrity is a non-negotiable secret of supernatural supply. Many of us think that Jacob was very crooked. I think that what Jacob had was his, a, a, an unusual level of smartness. And if he was such a very dubious man, God wouldn't have blessed him at all the points. But he, he had some cunningness. But despite his cunning nature, look at the testimony of Jacob to Laban. Genesis chapter 31 verse 37 to 40. He said to Laban, Whereas you have searched all my stuff, what have you found of all thy household stuff? As I left your house, did I steal one penny? Set it here before my brethren and thy brethren, that they may judge between us both. He's talking to Laban. These 20 years I have been with you, your use, mother ram, mother sheep, and your she goats did not miscarry in my hand. And the rams of your flock I have not fraudulently eaten. Anything that was torn of beast, that is, I was working for you, and lion came and stole a sheep. 
I didn't bring the balance of the sheep to you. I bear the loss of it. If anything was lost, I didn't report it to you. I paid it from my salary. I didn't come back with an explanation. My hand, did you require it? Whether it was stolen by day or stolen by night. I have never come to report to you that anybody stole anything. If they stole anything, I paid it without telling you. Thus I was. In the day, the drought consumed me. And the frost by night. And my sleep departed from my eyes. This was the way I worked for you. Please take your seat. How many people can say like this today in this generation? Since I was working for you, I didn't eat anything that I was not given. Since I was working for you, nothing missed under my hand. And if anything disappeared, I paid for it without reporting to you. Are there not many people today who are liabilities to their organizations? Something is missing all the time under their watch. They have complained all the time. No wonder God blessed him and changed him from Jacob to Israel. And Israel today is a nation to reckon with in the committee of nations. You may hate Israel, but you cannot ignore them. I think they are the smallest member of the United Nations committee of nations. But yet, any vote on Israel will instantly divide the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? That's Jacob. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 to 9. Daniel, the Bible said, and Daniel, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not corrupt himself with the portion of the king's meat. Listen to this as I round off on this point. Number one, same points I made in the last service. What God has not given to you does not add anything to your life. Genesis chapter 3 verse 24. God drove Adam from the garden of Eden. Adam who ate one fruit and lost the whole garden. He ate the fruit he was not meant to eat. He lost the garden. One million naira bribe can, can cost you the 10 billion that God wanted to give you. Can cost you. When you eat what is not yours, you lose what is yours. Will you write it down? When you eat what is not yours, you lose what is yours. Adam ate the fruit he was not meant to eat and he lost the garden that he was meant to have. We live in a world today where, where they encourage you to be fraudulent. You buy something and say, how much should I add on the receipt? Should I give you an empty receipt so you can write in whatever you want and go and declare anything to your office? What you eat that is not yours causes you to lose what is yours. Am I communicating at all? Number two, crookedness. Blessedness and crookedness are mutually exclusive. They can't live together. It is not possible. He said, blessed is the man that feared the Lord. Psalm 112 verse 1. The person who doesn't fear God can't be blessed. God cannot bless a thief. God cannot bless a crooked man. You are looking for the blessing of God and your life is crooked. Forget the blessing. Make a choice. There is only one choice between blessedness and crookedness. If you choose blessedness, then you must avoid crookedness. And if you embrace crookedness, forget blessedness forever. Thirdly, there are things people eat today at the expense of their future. That is a whole future can end. Because you ate something today, you took a money today, you, 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 you participated in, a, in an unclean resources division today. We, we saw Ekan in the first service. What about Gehazi? 
Second Kings chapter 5, verse 25. A man came to Neman the Syrian came to Elisha for prayer. After Elisha finished praying for him, he offered Elisha money. Elisha said, No. I, I, I don't collect money in exchange for prayer. I don't. And, 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 and the man left. And Neman said, the Bible said, Neman said, my master has spared this man. Spare, he used the word spare. That is, the man was meant to be dealt with. He pursued him. And went and, and told the lie. He said, my master said, I should come and collect what he refused earlier on. That he has some strangers he wants to divide for him the money. It's one thing to steal. It's another thing to steal in the name of another person. That's what the internet fraudsters do. Open an account and say there is an orphanage somewhere. Do, do not miss church or Pastor Paul and then just say you should, you, you, you should send money. Bishop uh, Pastor Adebo says you should send bastard demons. It's one thing to steal in your name. It's another thing to use another person's name to steal. Then he collected the money. And 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 25 to 27. But he, he returned back and he went and stood before his master. And Elisha said unto him, Where are you coming from Gehazi? And he said, Your servant went no I didn't go anywhere, sir. <laughs> he said unto him, Went not hard with you, did I, I traveled with you. When the man turned again from his chariot, I saw it to meet you. Is it a time to receive money and to receive garments? Olivia's vineyards, sheep, ugly men, servants, maid servants. The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman shall cleave to you and to your children forever. And he went, went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. If you are interested in, in Naaman's prosperity, you must also be interested in Naaman's leprosy. You cannot collect Naaman's money and not collect his leprosy along. Since you got the man's money, get his leprosy. Am I communicating at all? A whole future ended with one money. Now ask me whether that money was of any benefit to him. I don't think so. Well, how much will he service? Where will he? Is he a car he will drive with the leprosy? A leper is excommunicated from the, from the people. Of what use will, be, will the wealth be? Nothing. And finally, number four. Crooked practices attract the curse of God. Anytime people, people do crooked, dubious things, God just curse them. Look at Jeremiah chapter 22 verse 13a. He said, Woe unto him that built his house by unrighteousness. Woe unto him that built his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong. Big story building from stolen money. Big car from bribery money, blood money. Fine dress from prostitution money. What use is that? He says it's a curse. And for the avoidance of doubt, we are dealing with all forms of fraud and cheating. All forms of corrupt financial practices, all forms of and shades of dishonest gain, double deals, undercutting people. Cheating people, there are people experts, they cheat people as experts. No. Lied to get the money back. There are those who kill their business partners. They are expecting only 10 million. And they thought that 10 million equals 10 trillion. So the man should die so that only them will have the money. What shall he profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Blood money, ritual money. 
Money of kidnappers. Those kind of monies never give you a future. Just close your future. Send you to hell at the end. And makes it impossible for Jehovah to genuinely bless. But I believe that today is somebody's day. Is this message too hard for you? This is what we need in Nigeria. Because the whole system is wired with corruption. Wired. For somebody to push your file, you bribe him. You promise him that when the contract is out, you will give him something. That devil is a bastard liar. And this is as if they put thorn on the ground so that people don't have where to put their feet. Potopoto -poto and wee wee and poo poo everywhere. Nowhere to drop leg. Somebody is looking for where to compromise you and where to implicate you and where to corner you with money. Hallelujah. I am not here today to condemn anybody. But in case you are falling guilty of these kind of things, repent. Ask God for mercy. Ask God to free you from the consequences of them. And then ask him for the grace to live clean and straight financially and see what he will do with your life. There is clean money. Job had it. He was the most righteous and he was the richest. Finally, what is my counsel? One, line up with the principles of God to access the provisions of God. We read that already in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 2. Line up with the principles of God to access the provisions of God. Number two, refuse to follow the multitude to err. Everybody is eating bribe. Everybody is collecting bribe. Everybody is doing this and that. It does not make it wrong. It can never make it wrong. And number three, endeavor to embrace all of the secrets of God. Psalm 23, verse 1 to 3. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me. He maketh me to lie down beside grape. He leadeth me. If you must find still waters, God must lead you. Those four points we dealt with last week, Wednesday, look for the tape, go through them. The ones we are dealing with now, review it again. This week, Wednesday, the secrets continue. Go through them. And I believe change has come your way already. Stand up on your feet, people. Lift up your hands and let us appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let us worship him. Let us worship him. Let us worship him. Let us honor him. Let us adore him. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name. For the sake of time, I'm just going to be as rapid as possible. Lift your hands everywhere you are. And say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today. I receive the grace of giving. The grace of service. And the help to walk in integrity. Help me with this grace, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and speak to God.